So very good day to everybody present here. And a warm welcome to all my dear students and young researchers. About the advanced programming practice class, we shall be dealing with Hello World app. Actually, this is the initial part of our today's uh, session with uh, Django. Then we'll uh, discuss about the initial setup. We discuss about how you can create an app, the views as well as URL confs. And then we discuss about the hello world. Uh, of course, we'll discuss about the git, bit bucket, and then we'll conclude our today's topics. So this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers. And you can reach me at dr.christoanand at the rate of gmail. So before beginning the session, let me thank God once again for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this uh, very useful session about Django to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants, students and young students. So this particular class we will discuss uh, much more about the initial setup of Hello World app of Django. Then uh, we will uh, analyze how the Django welcome page pops up and uh, we'll discuss about how you can create an app with Django and uh, we discuss about the Django pages directory, Django pages app and then we discuss about the various installed apps of Django, the local apps of Django as well as the views and URL cons and uh, finally we are going to end with the hello world git as well as bitbucket. Of course at uh, regular intervals we'll have uh, you know some short videos about the knowledge in our topics. Start off with the uh, you know the initial uh, setup of hello world. Uh, in order to you know uh, whenever you are going to create uh, or maybe start a new directory on your computer, maybe with the case of the initial setup of hello world, you can create a hello world folder on the desktop. Normally in the command line you type to dollar uh, cd desktop. Okay, so cd refers to changing the directory okay or the current directory you are going to change it okay so changing to the current directory slash desktop and then dollar mkdir hello world so you are going to make a new directory that's what i said you are going to create a new directory hello world and then dollar cd hello world so you are going to change the directory to the hello world but make sure you are not in the existing virtual environment and if you see a text in the parenthesis before the dollar sign then what you do you try to exit so how you exit you type exit and then you press the return key okay so the parenthesis definitely it will disappear which means that the existing virtual environment is no longer active so you can uh, <coughs> go uh, march forward in order to make a new directory and to change the directory to hello world so here we will be using the pip n function in order to create a new virtual environment. That's what I told you in the previous slide. You have to exit all the existing virtual environment. Only then you can go for creation of a new virtual environment. What you do, you install Django and then you activate it. So for this case, you use the command line called dollar pip n install Django the version 2.1. So you have dollar pip n shell. Okay. For example, here you can go for windows platform or maybe mac platform or maybe unix or maybe linux platform as well in a mac platform you you should see a parenthesis at the beginning of your command line prompt maybe in the form of hello world hyphen xxx where that xxx definitely it will have the random characters okay for example uh, i can set up a uh, you know uh, 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 random character name as well for example hello world hyphen maybe i can give it as a mixture of number uh, lowercase letter as well as uppercase letter so 415 ivv zc okay maybe i can do it in this way so this is hello world hyphen that uh, particular uh, you know name okay so i'll display this hello world here in the text but definitely you will see something slightly different on your computer maybe you can set up your own name like hello world hyphen okay like uh, uh, Django okay one two three and then uh, maybe Django in capital letters you can you can do that whatever you want 
and if you are in windows you will not see a visual prompt at this time right so what you have done you have you know made all the initial setup uh, in order to create this hello world app so here we create a new django project called hello world project and make sure you include a period you know some dot at the end of the command line so that it is being installed in our current uh, directory that you are using so here in the command line with that uh, hello world app you know so that's the reason you use within parenthesis hello world and then dollar django hyphen admin start project and then the name of the project is actually hello world underscore project so this is how you start okay within the hello world app you have dollar django admin start project and then hello world underscore project so here uh, you know the uh, with the case of the commands that you use we already discussed uh, about home brew like a brew install tree okay so this is actually the tree structure of the uh, hello world app so uh, hello world dollar tree so here we would be using like pip file and then within pip file pip file dot lock and then hello world underscore project you have now four uh, set of files initialization dot py settings dot py urls dot py and wsgi dot py okay and finally you are going to go with manage dot py uh, so this is actually for exiting the environment you go for manage dot py run server okay so it will be having uh, like one directory with uh, you know seven files given so these are the you know the pre installed files that you have with the django okay so here with the case of settings dot py it is going to control the settings of the uh, you know the settings of the project and here urls dot py will definitely tell django which pages to actually build upon in response to the browser or maybe which pages you have to build upon in a, in response to the url request okay so maybe like uh, 8 not uh, 127.1.1 uh, uh, colon 8000 okay so that's the url request that you have okay so similarly wsgi.py will be something like web server gateway interface web server gateway interface and definitely it will help the django to serve all the eventual web pages okay and finally you have managers.py so it is going to execute uh, uh, various uh, django projects okay so, so here, here uh, with the case of managers.py whenever you you include this managers.py you should include run server okay, okay. so you are going to run the local web server or you are going to create a new app Okay. So, so Django uh, already, already comes, comes in with a built-in web server in order to uh, uh, develop all the files, develop all the folders for this purpose. And for this, within the Hello World app, you go with dollar python manage.py run server. So that's what I told you. Manage.py run server. You are going to run the local web server and you are going to create a new app okay, called Hello World. So this is what I was talking in the start of the class. This was the Django welcome page. So whenever you have uh, this page being displayed, whenever you access this 127.0.0.1.8000, you will, if you see this page, you can make sure okay, that the installation has worked successfully and uh, you can go forward in creating uh, you know, some projects with Django. So, so how you are going to create an app? Definitely, you should have some, uh, you know, some uh, you know, background information associated with it. So Django, it is going to utilize uh, the concept of projects or maybe apps even. So here the code looks you know, quite clean. It's, it's quite readable as well. Whenever you compare it with the other codes as well, it's quite simple as well. And here a single Django project will contain one or more apps within that, and definitely uh, everything. Uh, works collectively in order to uh, you know uh, collaborate and uh, function on a web application so that's the reason you go with start project okay so a real world Django e-commercial site will have one app for user privacy another app definitely for payments or financial section and another app for, for uh, to power the item listing details okay so everything is all about 
know every piece of functional so we have to you know create an app we have to uh, at least take a step zero okay so we'll call the pages directly okay so that's the reason what you do you exit all the existing virtual environment or you quit the server okay the existing server you are using so in order to quit the server you press the control and then c command okay so this is what you use the uh, you know how you create the existing uh, virtual environment and then you use the startup command okay so here you have hello world uh, dollar python manage to we start app pages okay so you are going to create an app so start app pages and then what do you do you uh get to know about the tree structure of this django pages directory so here hello world dollar tree pages so the same thing happens initialization.py admin.py apps.py migrations and then within migrations you have initialization.py here you have access to you know three important uh, folders you have models.py test.py and then views.py okay so this is how uh you get access uh you know to you know the three uh, folders as well you know i keep checking this page because uh, you know it uh, uh whenever only when i point to that home page or maybe the meeting window uh you know the people gets automatically uh, admitted otherwise uh, they will not be admitted so that's it so here in the django pages app uh, we'll review the most important uh, files even so here with admin.py it's actually a built in django admin app you are you can call it to be a configuration file or maybe apps.py it's a, a configuration file for the app itself and migration migration means you are going to you are going to change or maybe you are going to move from one end to the other end so it is going to keep track of any changes to models.py file so that our database and models.py stay in sync okay. and then you have models.py where we define our database models which django automatically translates into the database tables and then you have test.py it is our app specific test and then views.py you tend to handle the request as well as the response logic for the web app okay so this is all about the django pages so here are the install apps of django so you know well, you have already started the django project but still uh, you know you have to keep track of about the install apps we already have with django okay so <clears throat> what you do you get in touch or maybe access the install apps with the django apps and then you add the new pages app okay so what you do yeah, this is hello world underscore project slash settings to be way this is the install apps django dot country project django.contrib.authentication, django.contrib.content types, django.contrib.sessions, django.contrib.messages, django.contrib.static files. And finally, you add the new pages app. So pages.apps.pages.config. So this is actually the new uh, pages app you are going to add at the bottom. And here are the local apps. So you should also add the local apps because, uh, uh, you know, Django already it has the install apps, but uh, here the internal admin app is actually loaded first. Then comes authentication. Okay, then comes uh, content types, sessions, messages, static files, and so on. So we want the core Django apps to be available. So the install apps will come first. So it because it relies completely on the functionality, and uh, we cannot just list the app name pages. Uh, instead of the much longer pages or app dot uh, pages config so uh, uh, the install apps are given like uh, first preference because of the functionality features and here the django creates a apps.py file with each new application and you can add much more additional information as well so <coughs> we'll miss out the additional options and uh, Whenever you go with pages.apps.pages.config, definitely you can go for creation of the <coughs> new app also. Okay. So this is how you are going to create with the you know the uh, local apps even. And 
<laughs> coming to the most important part of the uh, hello world app so this is the topic views and url cons that you have to <coughs> con uh, configure about and you have to decide which content should be displayed on one particular page and uh, url conf is the you know the right um, you know uh, the the component which is going to determine where that content is going so which means like whenever a user requests for a specific page maybe when the user requests for a home page then url conf decides okay this content should go in that page okay this content should go in that appropriate view function okay and it will uh, display the results accordingly or else what you can say a view will output the text hello world so whenever you access 127.1.1 point uh, 1 colon 8000 like uh, you will have this hello world being displayed okay so whenever the user visits that home page it is being uh, redirected to the correct page. so definitely for a new beginners like us it's a uh, very confusing even because uh, uh, <coughs> what we try to do is uh, we try to map the uh, order of a given http request slash response cycle so whenever you type http yes django for beginners.com i should tell you like whenever you you type you you should type http yes okay so it means it's a safe uh, way that you access the browser okay django for beginners.com so this is uh, for new beginners like us whenever you start or maybe create a new django project you know that you are going to access the url pattern definitely it will uh, redirect you the, to the correct content that is being actually displayed so here we have the url pattern which specifies a view and which determines the content for the page and a template for styling as well and then you have the http so here within the views and url cons you have the url view model so here within the model you go for a template so this is how the fashion looks like the url the exact view how it should redirect and then you have the model and then you have a, a particular template so each of the uh, you know the uh, you know the blogs or maybe any websites it has its own uh, particular template and you can change the template at the need of the so here with uh, what we are going to do you are going to update the views.py file in the pages app so in the pages slash views.py we are going to go with from django.http import the http response so here you are going to define the home page view and then you are going to return the http response hello world so whenever you say the you know whenever you uh, get access to the view function home page view which means it's automatically redirected to that content hello world okay so we have imported the built-in http response method so that it is going to return a response object to the user so that's the reason whenever you go with the http response it will uh, you know redirect it to hello world. so now that we have created a home page view okay so that's going to accept the requested uh, object and it is going to return a response with the string hello world so in the command line you go with with the hello world you have dollar hash pages slash urls.py so here uh, you have hash pages slash urls.py from django.urls import path so after getting access to the path from dot views import home page view now within the home page view you have now url patterns so here the url patterns you have the path home page view the name equal to home so you are going to point it to the home So on the top line we import the path from the django uh, in order to path the url pattern and then next you import the views okay so when you go for dot views we are going to reference to the current directory which is our pages app definitely within the pages app you have both views.py and urls.py so here we can summarize that our url pattern will have a 
apply the regular expression for the empty string double quote and then you specify the view called as a home page view and then you add a optional url name of the home okay. so whenever you are going to uh, you know point to the home page okay you you are going to represent it by the empty string double quote and then you use the home page So we have almost completed it. So the next step, you know, the final step is actually we are going to configure the project level URLs.py file. Okay, so we are going to have you know multiple apps. You are not going to go for a single app, but you are going to go for a multiple app within a single Django project. So everybody, you know, every app will have its own root. And uh, you, you are, what you do, you update the existing hello world underscore project slash, slash URLs.py file. So here the same thing you are going to do hello world underscore project slash urls.py and then from django.contrib import admin. So this is the install app from django.urls import path and then include. You are going to have the URL patterns. Okay. The URL patterns is nothing but admin.site.urls and you include the pages.urls. So within the admin.site.urls you are going to access the pages.urls. Okay. So now that you have imported the include on the second line next to the path and you are going to create a new URL pattern for the pages app. Okay. So <coughs> it will be you now rooted to the pages app and then in the pages app it is going to route to the home page. So here we are after doing all this one you restart the Django server so within the hello world you type dollar python manage.py run server and if you try to refresh this 127.0.0.1 colon 8000 now you will have hello world being displayed so which means that everything works as expected and according to the uh, you know, the command that we have done. here you are going to actually import the path okay here you are going to import the path like from only from django.urls you are going to import the path and then you are going to go with from dot views and then you are going to import the home page view. And within that you are going to access the URL patterns like you are going to point it to the home. So this is how you are going to get it from the model. And only then you are going to connect the models you are going to transform it accordingly. So actually uh, like uh, we have a set of uh, you know, ways like uh, maybe uh, whenever you are going for you know, uh, the URL patterns then definitely you should have some uh, you know, set of rules, set of regulations, which means you have to go in with an empty string, or maybe you're going to go with a home page view, and then you have to uh, add an optional URL name. So you're going to access the home page view just from the model. So this this comes only from the like importing path and and then the home page. View. Uh, okay, we understood, but uh, we should display the data from uh, the model to view. <coughs> Dis display we should display the, the uh, display the uh, data to view. Yeah, display the data to view. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Only then, only then, uh, you go, only then you can you can you can select it. You can uh, check it with the you know several tests as well. And that's the reason you go for a git and then you go for a bitbucket event. Even even you are going to test, you are going to validate everything. So we are going to go with the uh, git. I think I think still my screen is visible to you. So whenever you are going to go with the git, you have to you know initialize, or maybe you are going to add this git to our repository so in the command line you have hello world within that hello world app you go with dollar git initialization so if, then you type git status means you will see what are the list of changes you have made with the last git commit 
and since this is the first commit then this list is all of our changes okay so here within the hello world app after git initialization you go for git status okay and then on branch master no commits yet and then the untrack fails okay so this is how you try to initialize and check the status of the git okay so you use the git add file to include in what will be committed and then pip file pip file dot log db dot sqlite 3 and then the hello world underscore project you go with managers dot py now with the pages okay so which means that nothing is added to the commit but uh, definitely the untracked files are present okay so what you do in order to track it you go for git add okay then you uh, add all the changes by using the command add hyphen a and then you commit the changes along with the message which is actually describing what has changed so this is how you uh, now access the you know the git with uh, you know testing and validation and then in the command line as i've already mentioned in the previous slide you go for dollar git add hyphen a and then git commit hyphen m initial commit so which means that the users you know, windows users may receive a error git commit error like path spec commit which is not matching any of the files which is known to git okay so definitely uh, it's uh, related to using the single quotes as opposed to using the double quotes so if you def definitely see this type of error which means it's not matching means just use double quotes so def double quote is different from the single quote definitely it will help you to uh, you know, remove all these uh, errors that are associated with the commit messages next you go for bit bucket so what you do you create a remote repository of your code for each and every project which means you have a backup okay suppose something happens to your computer like everything is being erased still you have a backup okay so for this case you use both uh, github as well as bitbucket for bitbucket is actually free the private repository is actually free okay but github it is going to charge a fee okay and here public repositories are free to use which means anybody can use it on the internet but private repositories are not and they are available only with the github okay but when you are trying to learn the web development definitely you have to stick on to the private repositories so that uh, you know you can uh, protect the passwords online so this is the bit bucket unique username so in order to get started on a bitbucket then generally you can sign up for a free account so you can go for bitbucket.r okay so like a slash social authentication slash sign up so whenever you you can create for a new or maybe unique username for your bitbucket below okay and then what you do you go for a create repo okay so you are going to create the first code repository here you click on the button called create repository create repository appears over here since you have to add the existing local code to this bit bucket okay so after going for create repository then you have the create new repository page here you have the repository name access level okay include a readme whether it has the, like uh, access to the git as well as the mercurial and then you have the advanced settings as well okay so here you enter uh, you know the name of the repository like hello world okay this is a private repository also it's very important to click on the drop down menu next to uh, you know this is uh, include a readme okay include a readme and then you have to select this no okay but uh, don't select on default yes with the tutorial but you know select no okay and then click the create repository button so this is the Bitbucket repo home page. So this is creating a repository. So since we already have the local code, we want to add to the Bitbucket. So you can get your local uh, Git repository on the Bitbucket. Okay, so you can click on this. You, know, you can see this get your local Git repository on the Bitbucket and then you can see the instructions, various instructions on the page. So which means we have already added the directory for our repo so you can step the previous step okay 
and in step 2 we will use two commands in order to add a project to the bit bucket so this is testing and validation i have already told you so which means that your command will differ definitely from what i am trying to use so the general format is uh, where the user is your bit bucket username for example i can choose whatever name like ws vincent similarly you are like uh, ramzudin or maybe yusuf okay rusman whatever maybe you can have okay. and here away a command line you have hello world dollar git remote add origin so okay so you are going to point to that uh, you know the you know the username git at bitbucket.r and this is the actually the username you are going to set slash hello world dot git okay so when you, if you run this command to configure to the git then you should use this push okay so dollar git push hyphen u origin master so you are going to push the code into it and uh, if you go back to the bitbucket page and if you try to refresh it you will see the code is being online like hello world project pages if file you file or that which means that initial commit has been performed like 34 seconds ago okay. you can see the changes in the bitbucket so we can say hello world the name i have given also and uh, you know the files which were updated some seconds or maybe minutes ago So since we are done, what you do, you exit all the virtual environment with exit command. So hello world, within the hello world, dollar exit, which means that you will no longer see the parentheses on your command line, indicating that the existing virtual environment is no longer. So these are the, you know, the independent works, uh, I've already uh, shared them in the Google Classroom. Uh, Erali, Erali Soryev, I see that every time that uh, you come up late to the class, so well, uh, I request you to come you know, early for the class. So this is the independent work, uh, Python 3 overview, environment setup, basic syntax and variable, variable types. I have already given this in the Google Classroom. So you can go through them submit them at your best available time as i've told you like uh, many times that you will have five independent works and one project work to complete and uh, it's an open ended project 